How did it get so late so soon? It's night before it's afternoon. December is here before it's June. My goodness, how the time has flown. How did it get so late so soon? Dr. Seuss. Rest in peace, Deborah Ann Hayden, a wonderful mother, wife, mother-in-law, and grandmother. You'll not be forgotten. Welcome back to this episode of Wellhouse Exorcism. This is your hostess with the mostess and the coolest person in the whole world, Shanna. This is your gamer in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a name? It's PJ. <laughs> a husband has no name. Uh, just a little uh, connection to the opening quote. The reason we took a week off is because our mother slash yeah, mother-in-law my, my mother and um, her mother-in-law yes. pretty much mother Every, my, <laughs> yeah, my second mother. mom everyone's second mom um uh, we were surprised by her sudden loss this past week so we uh decided to take a week off um just to kind of be with family and kind of like take care of everybody yep. so we will be bringing you gettysburg um obviously laura and pj are siblings so it was laura's mother too and ray's mother-in-law just like me so we are all reeling from the loss of her uh so so rest in peace. We love you. We'll always love you. And we'll never be as good as you. Because I hold your mother is a freaking saint. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Even the priests said so. Three priests. Three. Because the Pope was apparently busy. <laughs> Offensive. But anyway, um, tonight I wanted to then say thank you to the super cool Santa Claus, the sunglasses, Kevin Paul. Um, after our last podcast, um, I reached out to him and he sent me his second book. We had a nice long uh, Facebook messaging conversation. He is just a phenomenal guy. I love him so much. So he sent me Haunted Hills and Hollows Part 2, Still Lurking in Greene County, Pennsylvania, which I absolutely, <laughs> I love the cover of this. It's just like, it's, it's just even better than the last one. Um, so I, of course, have been reading through it. I do want to say I'm very sad. Rosemary Ellen Geely actually has passed away. She passed away suddenly a couple years ago. So Kevin Paul wrote this one all on his own for this, the uh, yeah. part two. Um, so it just, I had a lot of fun reading through it and, and we'll I, be using some of his material today. Right? I will. Yes. Because I want to give a little, little sneak peek to this book because he and I have talked. Kevin Paul wants to come on as a zoom interview and it's we're going yes, he has listened to all of our backstories of our house and Lord's house. He had lots of questions. He asked me a whole bunch of things like, do we smell sulfur? Do we hear any weird knocking sounds? That kind of mm -hmm. thing. So he wants to have a conversation with us all about that. Um, so he'll be on here to kind of promote his new book. Cause this is a, it's pretty recent actually. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So I wanted to, before we get into the introduction to Gettysburg, I wanted to actually do a semi cryptid for you. I know I said they'd never be on this episode or this uh, podcast ever. However, this is a fascinating story that connects to the Cherokee Indians, just like the other cryptid we kind of discussed with the black eyed kids. Mm -hmm. So when there's that much of a basis to it, I don't see it so much as a cryptid as like some kind of like specter. Mythology. You know? Yeah, there's something some there. So I would like to discuss, I'm not kidding the name on this though, white things. Very specific. <laughs> sounds kind of racist too but um well, uh, not necessarily i mean like because like a lot of specters are just white you know that's what they are so i guess yes but the interesting thing about this is again they they were um connected with native americans too so i find that incredibly fascinating hmm. i do so this is my little shout out to cryptids yeah, i haven't heard this yet so yeah, i'm very so you excited get to, you get to enjoy but i do want to say thank you kevin paul for haunted hills and hollows part two and so I'm in the chapter all about that stuff. So we're actually on mysterious Muddy Creek Road in Greene County, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And just like the last story we told about the the, the blue eyed black, the blue eyed kids, but also the, uh, the blue eyed lady, but the black eyed kids, and then the you know the whole like creepy guys and cars following us, uh, the men in black that connected to West Virginia because where Green County sits, it's very close to that like that line. So this actually kind of connects over to West Virginia as well. Because mm -hmm. that's where they, West Virginia is known for white things. Again, not racist. <laughs> Just <laughs> put that out there. Um, but it obviously it kind of spills over to Greene County. 
And I'm not sure if it's true because I didn't have time to like, you know, uh, second check that kind of thing. But in the book, uh, Kevin Pollack, she says that Greene County is like one of the most haunted counties in all Pennsylvania or in, in all the United States. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Which is why there's probably That's how he got two books out of it. <laughs> yeah. And there's more coming, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, white things. So I just want to read out this. It says, West Virginia is generally agreed to be white thing central. But what defines a white thing is broad based. Their descriptions vary widely apart from the ever present white fur, sometimes filthy, and the fact that they are never in good humor. White things can range in size from that of a medium sized dog to a cow. And they have been reported on four legs as well as walking upright on two. Eyewitnesses agree that they tend to have a mouthful of teeth, but the shape of the head can vary. Many are seen with glowing eyes, sometimes red, and may or may not have a bushy tail. They are said to be the source of blood-curdling screams echoing through the valleys at night. And it sounds like someone's being murdered when they're screaming. So it reminds me of the whole, like, you know, like, mountain lion, those, the, you know, the, the cats that scream out in the woods. Yeah, or screech owls, too. Yep, that, too. So, anyway, um, it says, they are credited with disemboweling horses and livestock in the 1800s. Uh. Yes, so that's, uh, I think about witches, too, but, you know. They will attack any living creature that stumbles into their path without hesitation or provocation. But again, the Native Americans of what is now West Virginia had tales of these creatures as well, which again, I find fascinating because the Cherokee had connections to this long before we settlers did. Yeah. And we have seen them, we still see them current day, 2014 in the story. Often described as unusually large white wolves or dogs, seeing one was a bad omen. So you didn't want to cross a path with this. Mm. You think like white would be good, but no, it's a harbinger of death, actually. Okay. So I think we should probably not buy a white dog. Huh. Yes. I would like another okay. dog. I have theories already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, although not every witness died thereafter. So maybe it's not a harbinger of death for you, but it's a portent of something to come, maybe. Um, some have no horns, some do have horns, that kind of thing. Horns. So some have horns. That changes my theory. What was your, what was your theory so far? My first theory was because we talked, well, we didn't talk about this, but we've learned about this through Skinwalker Ranch, um, is like possibility of a dire wolf. Yes. I would love to own a dire wolf. Because for people who don't know, dire wolves are real yes. things that lived in the Ice Age. And they're believers who, you know, like believers in Sasquatch or giant sloths uh, that like, you know, maybe some survived the Ice Age and they're out there somewhere. Um, so that's just... That was my first thought. Like, you know, a very large wolf, like cow-sized wolf. Yes. Sounds like a dire wolf. I want one. Add to cart. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there have been lots of stories of, like, you know, of these white things all over. But it says there was an interesting attack in 1929 in Marion County, West Virginia. A coal miner named Frank Kozel was walking home after work just outside of Fairmont. And the most direct path home took him through a wooded area. He was startled by the sudden appearance of a large white dog with a, quote, large, powerfully jawed head. The creature was covered with white fur and had a bushy tail. I just love that it's a bushy tail. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a big box. I don't Sounds know. like a dire wolf so far. <laughs> just does, saying, yeah. like, really big muscular head. Yes, there. yeah. Instantly, the animal attacked, clawing and biting with ferocity. The attack seemed to cause Causal no physical harm, but his attempts to defend himself were fruitless also. And so that's an interesting side note to this, too, is... While they will attack you as a, like, as a human, they will, they'll knock you down. They'll, like, just go at you. And it feels like you're being completely, like, you know, torn apart. Mauled, yeah. When it's done, you don't have a lick on you. Hmm. And it's fruitless to even, like, try to, like, push them off. Because, or, like, you know, to, to defend yourself because you can't. So isn't so that So that's why you are drawn to this. Because it definitely yes. points to more spectral than. Exactly. See, thank you. That's why mm -hmm. it's, like, not a cryptid. Not a cryptid. It, it is, but isn't. It's, it's just so cool. Because, again, Skinwalker Ranch, like, the dire wolf that attacked them, like, it killed something. You know, like, it killed well, a cow. It kills, so. it, it kills animals, but not humans. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So, okay. another side note there. So, it says, he struck and kicked at the beast, but his blows passed through as if it were fighting, uh, here fighting a ghost. It was strangely silent during their brief battle as well. As the creature shoved and attacked him, he could hear birds singing in the background. The white thing broke off the attack and ran off, leaving Frank to pick himself up and sort out what had happened. Um, <laughs> now, it said the attack seemed to be more psychological than physical, and there were no wounds on his body. But again, when they see like these animals that, that they see like carrying animals off, it does kill animals, but does not hurt humans. Weird. So that was 1929. Okay. So we're going to flash forward now to 2014. 
Okay. That's so, one heck of a jump. Thank you. There have been many sightings in between, but I'm using the book here from yep. Kevin Paul, my new best friend. The cool Santa. I hope he's listening again. Like, he, I hope he's not offended. He seems really cool. I just wish I could m- grow a beard like that. Like, that's a I know, nice, right? clean cut Look at beard. That. that is nice. Yeah. Um, Kevin Paul. My husband's name is Paul. Technically, we call him PJ. He can't grow facial hair. No. It <laughs> looks just, bad. He just looks dirty. It looks really bad. <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> oh, actually, I don't like facial so hair. I'm, I'm jealous. Well, Kyle has a gorgeous beard, and it's nice and soft. Yeah. But your hair is not soft. Well, I, I'd have to get it longer. Even if you We're did, getting off track. It's, it's they say prickly. they say longer it gets, the softer it gets. I don't know. No. Everyone's beard started off prickly like that. Well, I don't like it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the white thing has possibly put in two appearances along or near Muddy Creek Road recently, both within a few miles of each other. Stretching from Muddy Creek Road to the village of Garrett's Fort is Carmichael's Road, which cuts through the heavily wooded and sparsely populated Pennsylvania State game lands. It's an excellent area to hunt and an ideal place for deer and other wildlife to seek shelter from humanity. One evening, a young couple turned off Muddy Creek Road onto Carmichael's Road on their way home. About one quarter of a mile from the turnoff, they spotted an unusual dog-like creature crouched beside a closed farm gate on their left. In amazement, the driver stopped the car to get a closer look at the animal. It was large, very muscular, covered in fur, had black eyes and a mouth full of teeth. Snarling, the creature circled the car as the man fumbled with his cell phone to get a picture, of course. Yep. <laughs> what else would you do when you see the monster? Gotta get my phone out. <laughs> His wife began shouting and begged him to drive away as quickly as possible. Yeah, good. <laughs> Do you see this thing? I gotta get a picture of it. <laughs> you need to drive, honey. <laughs> That'd be me. <laughs> I know. And I'd be like, we gotta <laughs> go. We gotta go. Give me two seconds. No, we gotta go. Uh, anyway, hearing her pleas, he threw down his cell phone and sped off. And then there was a similar sighting that was reported by two men who in 2014 witnessed the creature at the opposite end of Carmichael's Road. So, which is interesting. So we do have one lurking in Green County, it sounds like. That's cool. Right? At least one. Which makes sense because, again, it's so close to um, to West Virginia that it's not really surprising that it would be that kind of close. Yeah. Um, so there you go. A little sneak peek from Haunted Hills and Hollows Part really cool. 2. Yes. Um, lots of really cool stories in there. And I just – I like the way that he wrote the second one because it's kind of like a Q&A in some sections too. So you get a little oh. background on him. He discussed his spiritualism. So again, like a side note over to the Liminal, Liminal Unlimited, Unlimited podcast. Yeah. So I was like, hey. Yep. So he'll have to talk to Jen and Kyle at some point too. But it's just a really good book. I yeah. really enjoyed uh, skimming through it. So thank you, Kevin Paul. And thank you for, uh, you know, writing in it too. I'm so, mm-hmm. I feel special that I have a little, little signature here with a nice little comment from yep. him. Really appreciate it. So again, we will have him on. Yeah. For um, a Zoom, we'll probably post the video too on our YouTube channel. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but we'll also ha- turn it into a podcast. So you guys, the listeners, can listen to him. And yeah, if you don't do YouTube or if you like to listen in your car or whatever, you yes, know, you'll, you'll still have the audio one, just like we do with Games Overboard. And when you're looking for us on uh, Face or Facebook and YouTube, both places, um, this is a subsidiary, if you will, of Games Overboard, the Wellhouse Exorcism podcast. You will not find Wellhouse Exorcism on YouTube. Like it's not going to be a channel. It's Games Overboard. Board. yep we all share one space my husband and i yep uh same with if you have any stories or if you would like to talk to us oh, email yeah. us at games at gmail.com especially from pennsylvania i want to hear it yeah. we can do an interview have you we- on the show if you awesome. live nearby we'll meet up with you that'd be great be amazing uh so anyways um if you come to my house don't bring a widget board though please no, and thank no. you <laughs> no no that stuff no runes no tarot, tarot none cards. of that trash no i don't mean trash but like for our house i'm gonna call it trash because i don't want it anywhere close to our house we're all good now yes you can also uh visit gamesoverboard.com and there's a contact us page and you can message yes, us there that is. way so but sometimes it doesn't work so we have to be careful of that I think we just hop on Facebook. If you if you hop on Facebook and message us on Facebook. Or YouTube, leave a comment on any of our videos. If they message on Facebook, chances are I'm going to respond to Not a lot of people have Facebook, though. We learned that through our giveaway contest. I love Facebook. I know, but not a lot of people Could have Facebook. Could you all make I a would. Facebook just to talk to me? I'm lonely. We do have Instagram and TikTok, but we don't have much content in either of those right now because we're old and we're learning how to use the Oh, apps. I know how to use them. I just don't want to. <laughs> well, yeah, I know how to use them, too. I should make like, a Twitter page, but, but I like, listen. Uh, Twitter's too toxic. I'm not going to make a Twitter page. I like my Facebook. Y'all can find me on there. I yeah. just saying. Facebook is 
the best way to see what we're up to. Yes, for sure. I live on. I'm from the college years when Facebook was cool. So it's going to, I want to throw sheep at people. That's what I want. I want that to come Ah, back. Ah, the super poke. Remember that? Yes. All right. Anyway, so that was our little snippet into the future. But our most prescient thing we're doing right now is going to be Gettysburg. (laughs) We've been talking about this for a while, but. It's finally happening. Yeah, yeah, we're getting into it now. Things have happened. Like it's been, it's been a month. Yeah. February. Yeah. Thanks to all of our listeners uh, who've. You know, reached out to us about our son in the hospital. Oh my gosh, it was. And then when he got back, my mom went in the hospital. And, then and actually, our son was in the hospital twice. Because the end of January, he's in the hospital because of a stinking arm. <laughs> like, yeah. honestly, 2023 can just bite my patootie. Like, I'm done with it already. Let's move on to 2024. How about it? <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for kind of waiting for us to come back. We're, we're coming back strong. We're due Gettysburg now. So, before we get into all the creepy haunted areas of Gettysburg... We gotta get a little historical background to it, don't we, Mister Hayden? That is correct. So let me pull out my book. Yeah, pull out my book with all my notes in it. With my notes. So um, we know that the Gettysburg War did not happen during the Revolutionary War uh, because the Battle of Gettysburg was a battle. (laughs) It wasn't a war. (laughs) It was one battle (laughs) during a very long war. It's a three day long battle over the hottest days ever in July. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, so we get a lot of questions. It's, it's interesting. My students get confused and I, I teach eighth graders, but Gettysburg was a battle during the civil war, the civil- American civil war from, you know, just oh, other yes, countries right. have the civil war. Yes, so sorry, American to, civil war. Yep. Um, and what's interesting is they think this, that the American civil war happened during the revolutionary war. And I'm like, honey, no, <laughs> you, you live in America. You should probably You're know. off by about 90 years there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, take it away. Okay, so um, let's go to uh, November of 1860. That's when Lincoln, President Lincoln, approved or uh, opposed slavery. Mm-hmm. Uh, he began, and then he became president. Uh, so at then in uh, December, December 20th of 1960, so about a month and a half ish later, um, South Carolina is the first state to secede, and. Uh, so what, what happened is like the southern states were like, okay, fine. Like you're going to outlaw slavery. Like fine. We'll just not. Bye, Felicia. Yeah. We're just, we <laughs> like, you can, you can keep it outlawed. That's fine. We're just going to be our own country. All right. Like yeah. we'll still trade with you, whatever. Like, you know, but we're just going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, now there was more to them to see there, than, than yeah, just but slavery, but slavery tends to be the that most. Was, that common. was their, um, like that's how they saw it. Yeah. Uh, if you watch like the Gettysburg movie, they they put it really nicely where one of the guys like, say you're a part of a gentleman's club, and uh, and then suddenly people wanted to start like bringing in other you know like other members to the club that you don't want them yeah you know, and you want them in there you just leave and start up your own club. Yep. And uh, <laughs> so it's like that's that's all we're doing. But now the North is saying we can't do that. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what happened is they wanted to leave, make their own country where slavery could still be legal. And there were, because the biggest part of their economy was cotton and tobacco farming and plantations, which would be like, th- th- it would ruin their livelihood in a quote unquote, it would ruin their livelihood because uh, slave labor made it financially feasible yeah. for them if they didn't have slave labor that would have been impossible to run some of those plantations yeah they wouldn't have been able to pay their workers yeah. and all that stuff uh, which is sad you know? yeah <laughs> i mean they probably would have they would just have to you know have small houses and things like well, <laughs> so we have southern listeners again, Could you again not offend them <laughs> again this is like you know some of their arguments and things yeah, like I that know, at the time uh we do not feel that way and um so well, we're also against slavery oh absolutely slavery yeah. is wrong <laughs> Isn't it sad that in this day and age, like you have to say that because there are just have to, like, horrible disclosures. people out there. We love everybody. Yeah, I know. This it's is- it's so disappointing, like that we're at that place and I know as a country. Um, that's anyways. a society, not just a country. Yeah. Society. All right. So, uh, so they wanted to secede so they can keep doing their thing and not be bothered by it. And the North is like, no, <laughs> like <laughs> you are going to remain as part of the United States, and. uh So then, three years later, June 30th, uh, 1863, uh, it is a Tuesday. And (laughs) uh, so, Confederate General A.P. Hill's infantry, they uh, spot 
some Union cavalry heading for Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. And uh, so their concerns, like, okay, what's going on up here, you know? So um, then the next day, July 1st, uh, the Confederate engaged General Buford on McPherson Ridge right outside the town. And it's 7.30 in the morning is when the first shot is fired by Lieutenant Marcellus Jones. Of Why the aren't eight- they still sleeping at 7.30? Like, what's wrong with people? <laughs> of the 8th <laughs> Illinois anyway. Volunteer Cavalry. Uh, then um, Buford's men, there are about 2,700 of them, hold the line against 13,500 Confederates. It's amazing. So hugely outnumbered. Yeah. They last until 1015 when they're finally reinforced. And, uh, and so they're able to like, you know, keep it going for a little bit. Uh, so then 15 minutes later, uh, the general who reinforced them, John Reynolds, uh, gets shot in the head. So he's there for 15 Ooh. minutes. Hey, hey, guys, I'm here to help. And then, oops. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I the, made a mistake. <laughs> so, oh, man. So That'd they, be my they, luck, honestly. Like, I'm here to yeah, help. Yeah, Ow. for sure. For sure. That'd be me, too. Uh, so then uh, from 1030 to 130, um, they're going strong, holding out. Uh, and then 330 rolls around. And they have to retreat because at that point, Confederates start to like circle around from the yeah. north and push them down. They're fighting from too many angles. So they start to retreat into the town. And for, for some Gettysburg, reason, by the way. Yeah. And for some reason, they are not pursued, even though they're retreating. The Confederates don't push after them. Probably because it was the town, first of all, yeah. they wanted to protect innocents. Yeah. Lee um, had like specific. Uh, instructions to like don't pursue them you know like you know don't don't risk it kind of thing you know they probably had like artillery and stuff too they didn't want to like the possibility of having like their maybe their cannons taken yeah you know maybe that could be it and if you have watch vikings for example you're into town there's an ambush there for you you (laughs) yeah so um so eventually though they do the battle does start back up and not uh, too long because uh about an hour later 440 or so the fighting is so strong that they have to retreat out of the town to Cemetery Hill. Mm-hmm. So now July 2nd, Thursday, it is 1215 a.m. So it's early Thursday. I'll tell you what, like, seriously, <laughs> go sleep. Yeah. Uh, General Meade uh, arrives. Meade, yes. um, we mentioned him before. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's something. Yeah. So he arrives to we mentioned him because of the um the Balroy Mansion. Right, yeah, the Balroy Mansion, that's right. So he uh re- reinforces the Union troops and um they dig in along Little Round Top and Big Round Top. Yeah, boy. So this that is That place is like cool to go to. Oh my gosh, everything in Gaysburg is just beautiful yes. and just like But they just lose their breeze there. Like <laughs> It was, it was like it's, it's July. It is stinking hot. Like yeah. I wanted to be there because it's like there's a breeze. <laughs> yeah. So all day long they are fighting. Five thirty in the afternoon, like they're still fighting. The Union is almost out of ammo. Jeez. Yeah. Um, Everything's fine, guys. <laughs> Throw your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and so then uh, they it ends in a failed bayonet charge. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. So then 4.15 to 5.30, uh, the same day, we have um, the battle of, well, mini battles, like, you know, little sub battles, skirmishes, yeah. that's the word, of Devil's Den. You. Oh, Devil's Den. And Slaughter Pen. So. Um, Devil's Den freaks me out, though. I hate going in there. Yeah. It, like, it just, the sound it's, stops. It feels like you're in a cemetery. It's the almost. first time I ever saw, like, real boulders, too. Like, Rocks the size of a small house, yeah. you know. It was, it's really something it's to see. What's scary? Uh, but here, General Daniel Sickles of the Union, he decided to break the formation and he moved his troops half a mile out of line, and he did okay. that so they could get high ground. Ooh. So, this was actually extremely unexpected and so it caused was good caused a lot of heavy fighting. Mm. Um. In, but because it was high ground, they kept it. They held the line. Good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, during the same time, 
was the Battle of the Wheatfield. Oh, We're going to be man. digging deep into that. That is one, like, that is... That, that's, that place has a presence when yeah. you go into the wheat field. Devil's Den does, too. The um, Triangle by Devil's Den as well. Yeah, like, the Triangle behind it. We'll, we're going to yeah. dig deep into that. So these are All some, these places we're going to do deep dives into. Yeah, I can say, like, so far, like, the general, like, opening our, like, you know, skirmishes were one thing. But, like, from day two on, it mm-hmm. is heavy casualties. Like, it yeah. is insane. Yeah. yeah. So Devil's Den, the Triangle, and, of course, the wheat field. Oh, just the stories of the wheat field freak yeah. me out. Oh. Massive, massive losses on both sides. Oh. It. Something ra- very rare happened, which was hand-to-hand combat. Yeah, they had to. Uh, so then after that, uh, from 8 p.m. to midnight was the Battle of Culp's Hill. Mm. Uh, this is the infamous fishhook formation yeah. that was being held by the Union. It was f- uh, 1,424 Union soldiers to almost 5,000 Confederate soldiers. Wow. <laughs> um everything's fine guys yeah <laughs> it's great so they fought there for many hours uh into uh early july 3rd and uh they had this method of rotating troops out so they could keep the rate of fire up real high yeah so group oh, well, and to keep people from getting overheated too absolutely yeah uh Oh, post it. You're getting real. Get, You're getting real now. Well, it was my bookmark because oh. I wrote these notes in the middle of my my book. <laughs> like I don't know why, because I have I notes all being over. Like legit. Like look at my post. Let me just pull this off now. Uh, nope. Next part. Oh. So then around one p.m., uh, uh, General Lee chooses to attack the center of the line instead of going after the edges and trying yeah. to like push them back. Mm-hmm. He just goes straight for the center of the Union line. That seems. He like takes a- twelve thousand troops. Into the center of the line. Okay. Across a mile of open ground. That sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah. This is the infamous Pickett's Charge. Yeah, because they get shot from all angles then. Uh Uh-huh. For a mile of open ground against cannons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So. Pickett's Charge, man. Their goal was they were aiming for a copse of trees on the other side of this field. Um, Instead of a copse. It's pronounced. Hey, see, oh, the kid upstairs. Um, it's pronounced cops. Are you sure? He, uh, <laughs> <laughs> cops of trees. Yes. Okay. I'm the English. <sighs> Am I sure? Cops of trees. I don't think I've ever heard the word said out loud before. You see, be so you just read it, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it looks like the word corpse minus the R. So cops of tree, cops of trees. Yeah, it's a cops. Okay. Moving so on. the entire mile charged. long. Charge. So this is, yeah, the infamous Pickett's Charge and uh, the turning point of the battle. Um, yeah. It really so, was, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, the Confederates do make it to the stone wall at the other end of the uh, of the field. Yeah. Uh, the Union had 1,500 casualties. Confederates had 6,000 casualties. Half of the troops that left. Uh, the, it ended in hand-to-hand fighting. Lee tries to resign after this failure and he completely like there's a quote of him just saying it was my fault mm-hmm. uh well uh, that's a good person like he's he fesses up to it mm-hmm. like, he, yeah he he, he yeah. takes it on and i under like i get the reason because he really thought the middle of the line would be the weakest he thought that it could crumble he could break the line into two parts and surround them you know i get it I know. Um, to I think push that's to push through the middle and then surround the two edges. If you had more people, sure, but you're getting shot at out like three. Well, twelve thousand troops. Like you would think, you know, that'd be enough to just swarm them. You know, like army ants or something. But I disagree. Anyway, I just feel bad for the pickets charge. Yeah. Uh. So the two, uh, commanders who had to lead their men in because he, you know, Lee stayed in the back and just ordered. Of course. Uh. There was uh, there was Longstreet and Pickett. One took the left, one took the right. Yep. Neither of them ever forgave Lee for this. Of course. Uh, you know, their men trusted them, and they led them to the slaughter. Uh, so, uh, Confederates retreated. Meade didn't pursue them after you know, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, done, we've done enough, guys. Let, yep. Let them back. <laughs> So that was essentially the end of the Gettysburg battle. Uh, that that Proper. was the turning point. Yeah. That yeah, that that was it. So when it's all said and done, Gettysburg had somewhere between forty six and fifty one thousand casualties. Mm-hmm. 
between, you know, combined in Union and Confederate sides. Yeah. And uh, from there on out, morale for the Confederates was broken. The war lasted two more years, Did, but yeah. I mean, they didn't really have any made any major victories at all. No. Uh, it was all Union victories, and then they surrendered two years later. Yeah. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is Gettysburg. Well, and one thing you didn't mention about uh, the wheat field is. Well, the, yeah, I didn't want to go too deep into it. Well, I, we, we gotta we gotta pick some interest here, okay? Because right? um, I'm not sure if they can pick if the microphones are picking up the children upstairs playing. I'm sure they probably are. Um, this is just a dry like uh, mic run for us. Like we're not going to do a lot of editing because we we're trying to get through. We're just tired. We're, no, we got through. We, we're getting through a week, yeah. so we wanted to just give you guys a little snippet of what's to come. But like, um, I want to give them a little bit more. Okay. So, okay. So. The, do you remember like when we were at Gettysburg, what they said about the wheat field, the color of it when it was all done? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. The discussion of it was it was just red. Like yeah. you saw nothing the but red. The ground was red. Yeah. Um, all the wheat was squashed down, of course, because it was a wheat field. <laughs> it yeah. was supposed to feed people. Yeah. Um, but it was just red from all the blood, mm-hmm. which is horrifying to think about. Um, the Devil's Den and Triangle, like we'll talk about that later, but like the what happened to people there and why it's haunted. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren and Ray have pictures of the wheat field that we'll yes, be posting to our Facebook page. Another reason to get onto our Facebook page, people, um, and just take a look at it because we have some like, uh, well, we won't spoil that, but yeah, we have they have two pictures. They do. There's amazing. Yeah, they're pictures. really neat. People at Gettysburg asked for them actually to yeah. put like in uh, their museum. I yeah. think it was a museum. It was one of them. Maybe there's a bajillion museums up there. <laughs> Um, so anyway, so what also is like interesting, but also horrifying is the amount of dead horses. No one talks about that half of, get, mm. uh, of like just the war in general, because you didn't have cars back then. You had horses yeah. and their, your cavalry rode horses. Yeah. And so the fastest way to knock people, you know, down was to Aim shoot for the, the horse. horses. Yeah. yeah. And it's the amount of like, that you would just hear horses screaming in the fields, wheat field, you name it. Like you just heard them screaming as they died. And so for weeks after these this battle, you had rotting horses yeah. just everywhere. The poor people of Gettysburg can't really bury them or anything. No, they had to just, they had to burn them. Yeah. yeah. So the poor people of Gettysburg were left to clean everything up after these people left. You know, mm-hmm. because that's just the a sad the truth of war. You know, is that when you leave, someone else is picking up your messes. And so there was just, they said it was just a, the stench of, of like, you know, cooking hair and Ugh, meat and yeah. rotten meat. Uh, people, when they would walk around Gettysburg, like the, the town to go shopping or whatever, would cover their faces with um, handkerchiefs and gloves, like doused in mint and lavender, you name it, yeah. to try and like get rid of, to squelch the stench of yeah. rotting and decaying flesh. Um on our first official episode, we're going to discuss amputations, too. Oh, fun. Yes, because of all the different places, like the, especially the Cash Town Inn, the notorious Cash Town Inn for amputation. Um, so that's going to be an, a fun one to discuss, you know, like, I would say, like, you know, the 1800s wartime medical, I'm going to put that in air quotes, medical care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, how, why amputation was necessary, actually. And it still is in many cases for uh, war. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go over, like, what it was like to be a doctor in that time period. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that because I'm in charge of that discussion. Um, but like the river, the, the creeks and stuff running red from all yeah. the blood from the amputation. So you have to understand like these poor people in Gettysburg, like they're hiding in their cellars so they don't get shot at. And then when they get out of their cellars, they find piles of dead horses and limbs yeah. if they if they weren't taken along because they had to like, you know, burn things. And then they were left to clean up anything else that was left on the fields. They helped do, like, you know, mass burials yeah. and whatnot. But for it, our. Um, it was three disgustingly hot days in july like everything stank for our european listeners who have much much older histories in our country <laughs> i would love to hear your thoughts like oh oh boo hoo i know <laughs> oh forty thousand. listen here we've sweetie. had two world wars on our on our oh, land i know <laughs> so i know i would you know I, w- I would love to hear like how they view Americans when we talk about the well, Civil War and stuff. It has to be put into context, though, too, because you're talking, this was just three days of battle, and we were a, a very young nation. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of people. So, yeah. that I mean, after the war proper was over, 1865, 
there were like no men. Oh yeah. So to like try and get married and like you know repopulate America people in one, one just one <laughs> battle. Yeah. So like there weren't a lot of men. So to repopulate America afterward was actually very difficult. That's why there was a discussion we called um, build, rebuilding the South after this the restoration because we would literally had to restore the South because yeah. when uh, Sherman did his march to see he burned everything to the ground on his way to Savannah. Yeah. So like they didn't have any of their they built they burned every building every plantation every field every farm that they could just to break the south and break their morale but also break their modus of like economy so like we had to rebuild um so that's why we didn't really want to be a part of world war one or world war two because we didn't have the money for it we were still fixing (laughs) like it took us that long to fix yeah we had a reason for why we were isolationists in world war one yeah that's for sure when i feel like that again like that's what to put in context like they have a, a great a greater history because that's where you know the world started for humans, right? It was Mesopotamia, and they kind of sp- spread out from there. Yep. So Actually, they- uh, it might it's probably Africa now. Ooh. Yeah, there's we what? found we found the oldest human skull, and it was in Africa. Uh, I forget which country. Um, yes, yeah, Africa is a continent. Yeah, but it was uh, <laughs> and not a, not North America, that's for sure. Yeah, I forget where it was. I, I want to say Kenya. It couldn't but, was if it was if it was Egypt. It's at least close. Yeah, Ish. it was like northeastern Africa, I believe. But yeah, it, it's not Mesopotamia anymore. The oldest human is officially from the continent of Africa. Does this mean the Earth is flat too? I'm done. <laughs> Clipping the table. So anyway, uh, now that I've learned something new, a little bit of a sneak peek behind the curtain here. Our first official episode will um, go over amputation, medical care, and the cash town in. And then Laura will discuss the Farnsworth in. And I believe we're going to finish the episode with Ray discussing the Dobbin house. Oh, cool. Yes. Episode two then will be the Shriver house, the Jenny Wade house, the Weikert house. And if we don't have time for the Dobbin house, we'll put it into episode two. It depends on how long we talk about the yeah. two ends. Yeah. Episode three is going to be the Gettysburg Hotel. Gettysburg Orphanage, which is fascinating. Gettysburg College. And Laura has a friend who went to Gettysburg College. And so we'll have an interview with that person. I don't know anything about Gettysburg College. I know. It's exciting. Um, So we're going to have an interview with Laura's friend. Um, And then episode four will be your heavy hitter. So the big battles. Because, like, we want to do the – I want to do the buildings first because they're, like, all haunted and spooky. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we go into the battlefields. Because the battlefields are haunted too, man. So we're going to do for episode four, Devil's Den in the Triangle. The Valley of Death, which I, again, you know, the picket charge and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Iverson's pit, uh, Pits, Little Round Top, The Wheatfield, and General Lee's Headquarters, which is at Seminary Ridge. That might be two episodes. I'm not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. But it, General it, Lee's Headquarters is a hotel, though. You can stay there. Is it really now? Oh, we awesome. stayed there. Oh, we did. That's right. Ha <laughs> I was there. I was there. <laughs> kidding. And then episode five or six will be the Daniel. I'm going to go to all the different farms in the area then, Mm. because again, you know, you have to kind of put in your mind if you're a listener, like how far these battles spread out. Mm Because Gettysburg is a humongous area anyway, but you're talking, they took over different farms too to get food, but also to have places to put their soldiers um, for like, you know, rehabilitation, whatnot. So the Daniel Lady Farm, that one's interesting. The Spangler Farm, also fascinating. The Rose Farm and Sachs Covered Bridge. That one is cool. Well, we talk about the most terrifying thing. You? <laughs> the observation towers that you have to climb <laughs> to get a good view of the battlefields. Um, that's only for people like you, PJ. <laughs> why don't you tell our listeners why you don't want to go? My God. <laughs> <laughs> They're like what six stories at Some least of them tall. Are. Some of them on are. top of a hill at that. So when you're looking down, your car looks like a Hot Wheels car or even a smaller, or like a micro machine <laughs> down below. Oh my gosh! PJ has a, a devout fear of heights. <laughs> Getting up there was fine. I had no problems, and looking out and getting pictures of the view was amazing. I just and then I had to get back down. <laughs> I just made a picture. Oh my gosh, I've only lowered over here. Um, <laughs> so we have to start walking down the steps. And by the way, it's safe the entire time. Oh yeah, the thing like, <laughs> you'd think something that tall would wobble in the breeze and stuff. It doesn't. It's I'm, sturdy. I'm crying right now. So <laughs> I have to hold PJ's hand walking on the steps and he's there saying, oh, 
something. Oh, so, oh spit, oh spit, oh spit, oh, oh crap, spit. Oh crap. Yeah, here we go. And uh, I'm white knuckle <laughs> holding on to the railing. Yeah, he's double like fisting, like holding the railing. Yeah, like both down. hands on the railing and I'm walking <laughs> sideways down, down the stairs. And there's like this like five-year-old kid coming up with this family and they're like watching him confused. <laughs> like why is this guy freaking out? I was like, it's okay, just go around. <laughs> I'm and fine. There were old people who went around us to get down <laughs> faster because you're speaking so long. Oh my gosh, that was. And then there's there's like a couple of these like all I could th- th- all I could think not was that t- they're not that high though. Some aren't as tall, yeah. And so I was like, "Are you going to be okay on that one?" <laughs> you did not appreciate. <laughs> this my is jokes. the kitty tower. <laughs> you can you can make it on this one. <laughs> all I could think was like, "I'm going to lose my footing and just fall." Off, off these things. stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that makes sense. So that's not hot. <laughs> they're, they're terrifying. I'll get you. It's those... worse than the ghost stories, I tell you. <laughs> we'll do a deep dive into that too. <laughs> the, who made these? <laughs> oh boy. So if you have a fear of heights, I would, you know, I think from PJ's perspective, please do not go up them because Unle- our- this is the wellhouse exorcism. That's that's the experience you want. You want that fear. <laughs> you want to feel real fear. <laughs> <laughs> you want an adrenaline rush like no other. Just get up to the top and lean over that railing and look straight down. You just stop now. <laughs> Uh, I didn't realize that we were doing slapstick comedy on, on a very spooky <laughs> podcast. All right. Whew. All right. I got to stop, stop crying. Okay. I needed that. We all needed that. You <laughs> you and I needed that after the week we've had. All right. So that is it. We're, maybe we're talking like a month and a half straight of gays. We're going to go deep into this, give this. you all the ghost stuff. So you'll need to get on Facebook to see all the cool pictures that Laura has. I mean, like, goodness, some of the pictures yeah. that she has are phenomenal. Um, so that's going to happen. We're also somewhere in there going to have an interview, a live interview with Kevin Paul to promote his new book and yes. to ask some questions about what he's seen because he's – He's seen some stuff. Are we going to put him in the middle or are we going to just hold know. his interview on? We'll figure it out. All right. We'll go. We'll go with the flow. We'll yeah, go with the flow. Yeah. Got this. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so thank you so much for listening. Thank you for um, supporting us and sending us messages and understanding our week off because uh, of our family. Uh, but Shout out to my students who listen to this podcast while they do their work in my class. <laughs> they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Also, if you're my student listening to this, how dare you? You're in eighth grade. Do your work. Get back on Moby Max. Anyway, <laughs> I will not give a shout out. I'll yell at you instead. That's Mrs. Hayden versus Mr. Hayden. No, we let them do independent work and they can listen to whatever they want when they do independent work. So don't listen to Mr. Hayden. Do your Moby Max. Anyway, <laughs> have a lovely evening, all of you. Stay safe, stay well, and give your loved ones a hug because you never know when it might be your last time to say goodbye. Goodbye.